Um, but yeah, I, I'll take it without the spots. I'll just take the dig. <laughs> I've had veggie sausage stuffed around a beetroot, it's just not the same. Really nice to have um, because it was so cold, so nice and warm and comfort food. Mm, don't know how I feel about that. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I am Yvette and I moved to the UK two years ago, three years ago. Can't count, been in this pandemic too long. Um, and I'm documenting my experiences. And today I thought I'd do a fun foodie video because they're always the most fun. Um, I will say disclaimer, I am in the same outfit as my last video because if you follow my vlog series, um, my renovation series, I am getting work done on the house. Um, this week we're getting the bathroom's done, which means I will not have access to this room for filming. So I'm having to do a bit of a bulk film. So bear with me and the same outfits, but anyways, um, we'll jump into the video. Um, but yes, British food. So these are the top 10 British foods that confuse the rest of the world. Number one is <laughs> a Scotch egg, which I haven't, well, I have had, I've had variations of it. Um, so essentially a Scotch egg is an egg that is wrapped inside a sausage. Um, it is a very old um, recipe. It's been around for a long time. The earliest recipe they can find written down is from 1809 um, from Yorkshire. However, there was people, I think there was a department store in London that was doing it before then, which just the fact that there was a department store in London before 1809 is blows my mind anyway. Um, but yes, I think I'm always annoyed that I haven't had it before I went veggie because I think I would have really enjoyed it because I only ever ate meat and <laughs> meat and potatoes was like my diet. I didn't eat vegetables. So it would have been, this would have been perfect for me. Bread, eggs and meat. So I've been looking for veggie versions, versions of it, but it's not the same. <laughs> I've had veggie sausage stuffed around a beetroot. It's just not the same. Number nine, iconic. I've had this one. Um, it is a deep fried Mars bar. So. It is invented in Scotland, debatably Scotland's best invention, maybe. I think they invented the scone, but we'll see. Um, so the scone is not on this list. However, deep fried Mars bar, they get a frozen, I think it is, or a very cold Mars bar, put it in the same batter that they've been doing the chips or the fish in, um, and just deep fry it. It is, they, it is what it says on the tin, um, and it's quite good. I don't think, you know how sometimes you eat food and it like changes it completely, um, the taste? Uh, I find it tastes exactly how you think a deep fried Mars bar would taste. So take that for what you will. Um, but super fun. A bit older, also, I've done it. I, did, about it. I had it when I was in Scotland, um, which technically it was summer, but it was cold because it's Scotland. Um, so it was like really nice to have um, because it was so cold, so nice and warm and comfort food. I have also heard that they deep fried a kebab, which I'd be interested in, but I haven't had that. <laughs> Uh, number eight, I think we're on, is black pudding. So black pudding, um, iconic, my pop loved this. So I know technically it's British, obviously, but it came to Australia like all good British things. Um, and so what black pudding is, is that it is, it is congealed pig's blood, lard and oats mixed together, which sounds <laughs> disgusting. Um, so I'm like, feel a bit ill just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my pop loved it, but my pop also ate like sheep's brains and like used to pull, used to pull oysters off the side of boats, which is actually a bit interesting because this makes sense that he'd like this because the black pudding um, was developed, I guess, during like times of famine um, where every part of the animal didn't go to waste because, because you'd be starving. So that's why they created these concoctions <laughs> of um, food. Uh, so yeah, you don't waste anything when there's a play. Actually, I don't know what it was. I didn't look up a year for this, so don't come at me. Number seven I think we're up to is mince pies. Um, obviously Christmas staple. Now what's weird about mince pies is that the insides are fruit, um, dried fruits, and then at Christmas, they season them with, they season them with clove, clove, nutmeg, and cinnamon, which is supposed to represent the three disciples for Christmas. Um, so, that makes sense to me. However, a mince pie in Australia is like um, mince meat. So yeah, it's just, nothing will tell you the disappointment I felt when I thought, oh, do you have party pies here? I wonder. Party pies are like little mince, oh, little mince pies. Mm. Take the Christmas mince pie, heat it up, make it into like a little lava bomb, but meat inside, and you hand them out at parties. I'm sure you have party pies here. I'll put a picture. but. 
that's what I thought a mince pie was, was like a party pie. And then I bit into it and not only was it not a mince pie, it was cold and it was sweet, which is like probably fine. But like, you know, when you're expecting something and it's a bit of a like, so that was my first experience with a mince pie and it kind of put me off on my thing. Um, weirdly, I don't like things that are too sweet. I'm not a big dried fruit fan. So yeah, not one for me, but I like them aesthetically for Christmas and I like their vibe, but yeah, not for me, more for you guys. Okay, so this next one I had never heard of before this video, which is very rare because I have been researching these videos for over two years now. Um, my next meal on the list is called Bubble and Squeak. Bubble and Squeak. I have never heard of this. And so Bubble and Squeak essentially is like what you have left over from a, a, a Sunday roast. So you get all the leftover ingredients and you mash them together and you put them into, I think, cabbage. And then you put them into like containers and then you cook them. So it's like all the vegetables that are left from a, from a, a Sunday roast all compressed down into like, uh, like not a, I don't want to, not a pudding, but not like a patty, but do you mean like that? I'll put a photo. I don't know. It's wild. I've never seen this before. <laughs> I've never even seen it on a menu. So I want to go make it. Tell me, because you've been, because you, you guys are obviously all loyal followers that are watching this, you've seen the renovation vlogs and you've seen that I have a new kitchen. Would we be interested in cooking videos? Me attempting to make all these um, meals <laughs> and also trying to make them veggie. This is going to be harder. Trying to make black pudding vegetarian. <laughs> that would be a laugh. I'm going to try. Good, good. Glad we had this talk. Um, next one on the list. <laughs> Next one on the list is Toad in the Hole. Now I tried to make this one and I don't know if I did it right. I didn't love the taste, but I'm very much willing to put that down to my own cooking skills because questionable at best, to be honest. Um, but Toad in the Hole is essentially the uh, mixture you get from a Yorkshire pudding. You put it into like a casserole and then you put like sausages in it. Um, I've heard people wanting to call it sausage in the hole, which is infinitely more funny. Um, there's also been rumors that there was once a toad back in the day as part of the recipe that eventually got out of the recipe, but I think that might be a bit of a, a rumor or a, a wives, old wives tale. So next one on the list, which is not weird because it's common, but when you think about it, it is weird. And that is steak and kidney pie. So back to meat pies, because I have those in Australia. So I'm used to meat pies and we have steak and kidney pies. And I just, this might sound very dumb, but I didn't think they actually put kidneys in there. Is that, is that dumb? I just, well, so we have minced meat. So you just get all the meat and chuck it in basically. Um, probably a kidney in there, but it's all mixed in. So you don't know. Um, and so, yeah, I guess in hindsight, I have been eating kidneys. That's gross. Don't know how I feel about that. So yeah, back in the day, they used to put steak and kidneys into pies, mostly because of that same um, scarcity issue as, you know, black pudding and a lot of the other, and the Yorkshire and the bubble and squeak where they put the puddings together. Um, so once again, just a matter of not wanting to waste anything. Uh, they put the kidneys in to the pies, but it's meat to meat, I guess, but at the end of the day, and they still make it now. And you can steak and ale, steak and kidney pie, you could easily purchase that in the UK or Australia, which is a bit wild. I think it was, it was originally like offal, but then it turned into steak and kidney. Next one on the list is the probably the most funny named food, I'll say. And you can tell me in the comments if you think you know what it is, but it is spotted dick. <laughs> um, I actually haven't had spotted dick for the same reason I don't like mince pies. Um, not massive on the dried fruit front. Not massive on the dried fruit front. That's like, a tongue twister. Um, it rains mainly on the plains of Spain. <laughs> I haven't had spotted dick. It is essentially, um, I think it's a cake. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's like a pudding that is like pudding <laughs> with dried fruit and you normally serve it with like custard or ice cream. Um, but yeah, I, I'll take it without the spots. I'll just take the dick. Hmm, <laughs> don't know if that's gonna make the cut. Uh, um, fun fact, it got renamed to Spotted Richard uh, for tourists who got into a barrier to order it. So I thought that was very funny. Number two on the list is not the most controversial in terms of what it is, just its popularity is what's controversial. And that is beans on toast. Um, tell me in the comments if anyone watched Drag Race, which I know is very niche, but RuPaul's Drag Race, one of the contestants made an entire song about beans on toast. Um, and it's an icon. 
Um, so yeah, beans on toast. I think the rest of the world just doesn't understand the passion behind beans on toast. Um, it's a staple in any British diet. Put beans on toast, a bit of cheese, bake it. I like beans on toast, not gonna lie. It's like my winter food, although I didn't eat it last winter for some reason. Um, I think everyone always has a can somewhere in their kitchen. Um, but yeah, so beans on toast is iconic. Then there's also beans as part of a fry up and then there's also just beans um, in general. So, or baked beans, should I say, not just beans in general. <laughs> um, so it's part of like an essential English breakfast um, as well as on toast for a snack. Um, and the UK goes through 2.5 million cans of beans a day, a day, which is insane. So um, if you have had beans today, <laughs> give me a thumbs up because I'm expecting 2.5 million thumbs up on this video. The number one weirdest food that confuses the rest of the world is, no surprise, haggis. Um, Scotland's other greatest export. Um, so yeah, haggis. Haggis is minced heart, liver, and lungs. It used to be cooked inside the stomach sack, but I think now they just use like a normal pot. <laughs> um, unless you want to go somewhere very authentic. Um, and most people think it sounds, it tastes, most Americans seem to think it tastes like a uh, peppered meatloaf. So I have had haggis and I've had vegan haggis. Um, very good. I had it at like a, um, a very nice pub. It was like a specific pub in Edinburgh. And it was, um, like a, what's the, a Guinness pub, I think. Uh, and they had authentic haggis burgers and I had one of them and it was quite good. So don't knock it till you try it. Sounds awful, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there you have it. it, it there's, bleh. So there you have it. That is the quintessential list of top British foods that confuse the rest of the world. Um, tell me in the comments below, is there any foods that you think deserve to be on the list that weren't? Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well as hitting subscribe so I can see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.